Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was and is and is to come. It's 6, 6, 15 at 9.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, I just had a, a vision in my prayer closet, and this is a confirmation on consecration, and I want to share it with the whole entire world. We love you all, you two. Jesus is coming. Look up. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> excuse me. So my wife and I are gonna, um, my wife Gail. Yes. Very beautiful. And that I'm just f overflowing in love with. I just can't take my eyes off of. Uh -huh. And we'd just do anything for. Mm -hmm. And we could go wherever you want today. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna open up in prayer, okay, hold my hand. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses, as we are forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Oh, man. Thank you very much, my beautiful, supportive wife. Okay, so now, I was, I was, I was, I did not expect this, and let me say this real quickly. Uh, I'm not worthy of seeing these things. I want you to know it's not about being worthy. It's not by works that, like, I went and did good deeds, so God is showing me stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's about mercy and grace. So, People ask me why. I, I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. So, I'm, I'm in my prayer closet where I've seen many amazing things from the Lord. And I heard the Lord speak so clear, so clear, so clear. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. And I lifted up my hands just, you know, consecrating myself. I'm like, Lord, I consecrate myself. I separate myself unto you. I'm listening, Lord Jesus. It's all about you. I love you, Lord. I feel it again right now. And he said it a second time. Be ye holy like I am holy. And it seems like I was just in his presence forever, but really it was only two or three minutes. And I looked up and I saw this bright red, uh, where are we at here? Dang it, my bad. I'm so excited. My hand is like literally trembling. I saw this bright light. It had a red tinge to it up in the sky and it began to descend. And then I said, I said, Lord Jesus, how can I be holy? You know, I, I never really understood this scripture. And then, and then the, the light stopped. And let me tell you, I didn't discern any evil. You know what I discerned from this light and the sky coming down? Was Jesus. And he said, not by the blood of calves and bulls. And suddenly I got it. It's, I'm, I'm made holy through Christ Jesus and what he did on the cross. And so then I looked it up at... Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's not about works, folks. It's about grace and mercy. So I just typed into the, to the, uh, to the Google, "Be ye holy," and this is what popped up. Now I want you to, to I'll put a link to this. First uh, Peter one. He's talking about the coming of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of the dead, incorruptible, uh, reserved in heaven for us. And then he goes on about faith. Nowhere in here we find works. He talks about uh, mercy and grace and what Christ did on the cross for us up, up until that point. And then it talks about the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And, uh, and then it says a call to be holy. And then it gives you some simple things because I'm telling you, we've been called to consecrate and separate ourselves from this world unto Christ Jesus. And so you can, uh, you can gird up the loins of your mind. You can be sober, 
and you can hope to the end for the look at this grace that is to be brought unto you of the revelation of Jesus Christ and then it says you know we, we talked about lust and enticement don't fall into these lusts and enticements but as he which hath called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for I am holy and so and I'm put a link to this whole thing I'm like remember Jesus he said his our righteousness is from him and so I, I looked up well anytime it says where it is written I had to find out well where is it written and it, it's in Leviticus 11 44 it says for I am the Lord your God you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy see it really was written and then it talks about not defiling yourself with with animals so and see this is old covenant new covenant and one of them does one translation here talks about uh, consecrating yourselves so I want to look I just wanted to share this with everybody we, we are called to consecrate ourselves and separate ourselves and Jesus is coming I'm going to look up the word sanctify. Uh, and Romans 8 is uh, popping up in, in, my, uh, in my spirit even as I type this. Look at this. Get some volume on this. Hold on. So the Holy Spirit is flowing in this place today. Sanctify. Sanctify, sanctify. It says set apart as or declare holy, consecrate. Let's look up, uh, consecrate, set apart. This is what God is. Uh, consecrate definition. Make or declare something typically a church sacred. Dedicate formally in Christian belief to make bread or wine into the body of blood of Christ ordained. So in other words, what I hear the Holy Spirit saying is, is set apart, set apart your life for Jesus Christ. And by the washing of the water of the word, by his word and by through prayer and fasting, you're going to consecrate your own temple unto Christ Jesus. And when you do this, you will be holy and you need to walk in holiness and don't ever look back because Jesus is coming. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. I want to thank everybody. We love you all. God bless you all. What I'm asking you to do is think. Please, think. Why do you do what you do? Why do you dress the way you dress? Why do you use the jewelry you use? Why do you do what you do with your money? Why do you do what you do with your time? Why do you watch what you watch on television or at the movies or on the computer? Why do you do what you do on the computer? Do you have God-glorifying reasons for all of it? Do you live in that faith, believing what I am doing is glorifying God? Because whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever you do, whether you eat or drink, you are to do it for the glory of God. We need to be people who think. Don't just do it because other people at school do it. Don't just do it because other people at work do it. The worldly system is everywhere around us. Do what you do because you can substantiate it from the Word of God. Period. Are your motives deceitful desire 
worldly desire, desire that wages war against your flesh or against your soul, driven, are they driven by those passions or is it <coughs> driven by a desire to please God? That's what we have to ask ourselves. What is the motive? Well, I dress this way because I want to get this guy's attention. I hope you would see what the motive is. When the Bible says, if you want to get a guy's attention, the kind of guy that, guy's attention that you probably ought to be trying to get, you should be working on a meek and quiet spirit, ladies, knowing the Scriptures. That's what 1 Peter 3 says. I mean, young guys, if you're, if you're working out to get the lady's attention, you're working out because you want to be all hulked up and big and look like the world. Now look, physical exercise profits some. If it helps you discipline yourself and it helps you feel better and you're not near as tired during the day and you can get by with less sleep and it just overall makes you feel better, there may be a place for it. But is it godliness driven? What we wear. I mean, do you wear what you wear because you're wanting to glorify God? Do you give? Do you use your money in ways that are God-glorifying? What is your motive behind what you do with your money? If you're going to make the decision to have a television or not have one, I know Christians that have them. I know Christians that don't have them. What's your motive? What are you accomplishing? When you eat, why do you eat the way you do? When you drink. If you were going to say, well, the Bible allows me to drink alcoholic beverage. You need to ask yourself, why? Why are you doing it? Is there a motive there that is God glorifying? It's not God glorifying if you do things that will cause a brother to stumble and you do it right, before, right in front of them. If meat or drink cause your brother to stumble, you need to abstain. Why do we do what we do? Are we trying to win people to Christ? Hudson Taylor dressed like a Chinaman to win Chinamen, and he did. Paul became all things to all men that he might save some. By all means, he might save some. You see, when you're driven by love, when you're driven by a desire to save people, when you're driven by a desire to grow, when you're driven by a desire to become more godly, when you're driven by a desire to become more meek, more Bible knowledgeable, when you're driven by a desire not to make my brothers and sisters stumble, that there's, see, see the motivation? Versus when you just want pleasure. And so you're going to do what you want to do because you want fun. You're going to do what you want to do because you want to enjoy. You're going to do what you want to do because you want to satisfy these desires. That's dangerous ground. Listen, they wage war against the soul. And people lose their soul in this fight all the time by God's grace, by God's strength, by God's power, abide in Christ and seek to live the right motives, bringing your thought life, bringing your motives in subjection to Christ all the time, in subjection to Christ, being led, guided, motivated by love. Let love rule your life. Let love for God and love for your fellow man rule your motives, not passions, but love. God help us.